These are the times NBA refs ruined the NBA. And at number 20, keep an eye on Tatum. Tatum. This is bogus. I, I hate this stuff. This is ridiculous. Yikes. That was hard to watch. And so is number 19, because Anthony Edwards once gave us the nastiest dunk when the refs ruined it all. Oh, backdoor cut Edwards. Look out! This dude's nuts were even above his head. But what Giannis did at number 18 should be illegal. And the Kumpo, checked by Eustace. He'll drive, he scores. He's out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds. We should be going to overtime. Now for number 17, we got to talk about Damian Lillard, because he was close to throwing fits with the referees. With Portland down two, Lillard splits the D, drives, and looks like it should have been a goaltend. It should have been a goaltend. No call. That absolutely looked like it should have been a goaltend. But Dane wasn't going to stop there, because he had to tell the NBA how he really feels. We get to the last play of the game, and they miss an easy call. And then they tell us it's an easy no call. Like, that was obviously not a goaltend. It cost us the game, man. The crazy part was that even the Jazz players knew it was a goaltend. <laughs> Maybe that's all I got. At least now we know why Dame hates the zebras, and so does number 16. Because all Jordan Poole did was pass to the referee when he did this. Oh, oh, oh what has been a very entertaining game. That should be an easy call and a foul on Poole. You just you can't do that. You can't throw the ball at the official. Now that's ridiculous, but not like the referee at number 15, because Scott Foster does whatever the hell he wants. Murray. Under to Gordon. Gordon. And a foul. And Scotty Barnes, the culprit, I believe. Oh, we got, oh, we got a technical foul. And Scotty Barnes just got tossed. And he doesn't know why. They call the foul on Pirtle, his third. And they just kicked Barnes out of the game. And after the game, Barnes was still confused about the situation. Uh, I was just saying something to myself in there. I guess he took offense to it, so uh, it just threw me out of the game. Imagine getting ejected for talking to yourself. But number 14 wasn't just confusing, it was straight up crazy. Now it's Gilgis Alexander, and that's a three-point play opportunity for him. Hey, somebody put Doncic in a timeout for being mean to his teammate. Unbelievable. And so is this next one, because Blake Griffin and Reggie Evans high-fived each other and got a technical. Yeah, taken away by Bledsoe. Griffin, back to Evans, and a foul. And then a technical foul, called after the play ended. And I believe it's gonna go against Evans. Um, I would love to see the refs explain that one. But number 12 was a whole different ballpark. Cause in the game between the Cavs and the Hornets, the referees gave Dean Wade a technical foul for interfering with Rozier during a dead ball. touched a player on the court and for some reason the Hornets get three points. I mean, making a dumb call is one thing, but reviewing it and not changing your mind? That's a freaking crime. But so is number 11, because the refs didn't just give a random tech. Instead, they cost LeBron a whole game. 4.1 seconds remaining. James comes up top, gets it. James on the drive, gets in the paint, layup, missed it. Lakers furious, they thought he was fouled. That is clearly a foul. Hold up. The ref was standing right in front of LeBron. And it didn't matter what the Lakers were saying. Not even Pat's camera was convincing enough. And in OT, the Celtics got the dub. But it's what Tatum said afterwards that was hilarious. I don't, I don't really know what happened. Um, I got to watch the game, watch the film. Because everything was just happening so fast. That's the biggest cap I've ever heard. But cap or not, we've reached the top 10 moments. So things are about to get really heated. And we got to talk about the time that Kevin Durant was straight up glazed by the referees. See, when the Rockets went up against the Warriors and the score was all tied, KD got away with this. Size difference and let Durant go to work. It's Durant. Makes a move, lost the ball, tries to get it. Saves it. Saved inside. Outside Curry. Two. It'll 
will be interesting to see on replay. Out. Absolutely he's out. out. Wow. How the world do you I mean, miss how that? do you miss that? that? Dude was standing right there and still couldn't see bro tap dancing out of bounds. But it didn't matter, though, because James Harden wanted to make sure the rest weren't going to get paid. Harden trying to get free. Down to three. Down to two. It's a three. Good! Good! He got it! James Harden, a flamethrower! I mean, there ain't no way refs could mess up any more than that, right? Or wrong. Because for number nine, they changed the outcome of the NBA Finals. See, it was game two of the 2010 Finals, Lakers versus Celtics, one of the biggest rivalries in sports history. And in the fourth with two minutes left, the Celtics were ahead 93 to 90. That's when this happened. Uh, Garnett tips it out of bounds. No, they say last touch by Gasol. But they can review this if they want to. Under two minutes to go. Now, there's a rule that the NBA added that gives refs the chance to review calls that happened in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter, which this obviously did. But there was one problem. Scratch that. There were three problems. Eeny, meeny, and mo. Now, you would think seeing the incident from 50 different angles would help them make a better call, but... Now the officials conferring, and they'll change the call. Gonna keep, I'm sorry, they're going to keep it the same. But Eeny, Meeny, and Mo ain't the only refs who made wild calls. Because for number eight, the refs didn't just ruin one game, they ruined an entire series. See, in 2018, the Utah Jazz went up against the Oklahoma City Thunder in the first round of the playoffs. And in game six, the Jazz were up 3-2. So it was a do-or-die game for OKC. So with the game coming down to the final minutes, the refs would make their first ridiculous call. George. It's going to be three free throws for Paul George on the foul. And now they're going to change their mind. How are you going to change such an obvious call? That's just wild. But it gets worse. Because later in the game, with just 24 seconds left, OKC was trailing by three points, meaning they only had one option left. Got Gobert up in the air. Didn't get the foul call. Oh, boy. Now watch this. You see that? There it is right there. He gets his them on the hip. Yikes. I mean, looking at the Utah coach, even he knew it was a foul. But what if I told you that it's going to get a lot worse? Because one ref messed up so many times, it eventually got him banned. Another referee was called fixing games. Yeah, these refs are tripping. But first, we got to talk about number seven. The time one referee cost the team the game and had a team owner forcing the NBA to replay the game. See, during the 2023 regular season, the Warriors and Mavs were going at it. And with under two minutes to play in the third quarter, two referees would have the whole Mavs team confused. Who is it, pass? 13 points for Hardy. Pull right down Main Street. Because right after Poole dropped the hammer, the Mavs called a timeout. And if you look at the ref, he's making one thing clear. Mavs ball. But after the timeout, every player from the Mavs felt something was off. That's when the referee decided to give the ball to the Warriors. What is going on? Uh, Dallas they, decided not to guard their own they, basket. That's they, going they on were, Shaq of the Fool right there. They were all on the wrong side. There's no Maverick defenders. The refs really out here handing free points to the Warriors. Now, making mistakes is part of being human. But the crazy part in all this is that Dallas wound up losing the game by two points against one of the worst road teams in the league. But things didn't stop there. Because after the game, you would think the refs would be the ones getting fined. But instead, the NBA slapped Doncic with a 35k fine for making this gesture. Yeah, things were getting wild, and Mark Cuban was not going to lower the temperature. Instead, he filed for the game to be completely replayed. Wow, that's ridiculous. And so was number six, because heading into game three of the Eastern Conference first round in 2002, the Hornets went up against the Magic. But heading down to the final seconds of the game, one player hit the greatest shot of his career, only for this to happen. At the buzzer! No, yes, no! It's waved off! Bernie Fryer says no, it will not count. He was waving immediately. Oh, it was so my close. My goodness. Bernie Fryer says no. Yeah, the refs waved it off and ruined everything. But the Hornets would beat the Magic in overtime and eventually the series. But at number five, we got to talk about the player that is anything but clean. See, this is Rasheed Wallace, also known as the player with the most ejections in NBA history. But he wasn't always like that, because during his whole high school career, Rasheed only got one technical. But that was going to change once he would make it to the league. Just in his first season with the Washington Bullets, Rasheed got a talking to by the commissioner to get his shit together. Yeah. Wallace was slowly becoming an enemy to the refs. And in 2000, it would be clear. See, during the Western Conference Finals against the Lakers, Rashid picked up his first technical when talking smack to the ref. Now Wallace pantomimes what he thinks he might have done, disgusted, 
And now, while not in the game, he gets the technical for con continuing the conversation. Now, obviously, he said something uncalled for, but what happened next had everyone confused. Whack, get out. Nobody didn't say nothing. Get away from me, Steve. Nobody didn't say get away from me, Steve. Can I talk to he didn't say a word. Technical foul, Wallace, he's gone. No, not right. I asked him three times to stop staring at me to try to intimidate me. I'm done. He's gone. I asked him, I told him. I'm going to my explanation. I have already told Mike twice before to have him stop staring to try to intimidate me. He did it again, he's gone. Not gonna lie, I think she's still mad about it. Just like the Rockets were at number four. See, in 2018, the Rockets would face the Warriors in the Western Conference. And after six games, there was nothing separating them. That's when the refs decided to take matters into their own hands and destroy game seven. Just by the tone, Harden and Swarman. They are in their grill. There's Harden way off. Harden on the drive, we kept it to the game in this Western Conference Finals. Harden scores, they count though, but he's fouled by Thompson, who picked up number four. Well, he used to go into their smallest and quickest lineup. Oh, back, he thought he was fouled. Good defense again, Durant. Durant. Rebound, handled by Tucker, the foul is called on Golden State. And as Harden goes up for the shot. Somehow the refs missed nine calls, which ultimately helped the Warriors to a Game 7 win and a spot in the NBA Finals. But all right, we're in the top three, so we got to talk about our boy Joey Crawford, because this guy has done it all. From ejecting mop boys to dancing on the floor, you name it, he's done it. And in 2007, the NBA had enough. I mean, you could understand why. Crawford sucked, because dude once did this. Damon Jones able to race it down. And contact made. Joe Crawford, is it a foul call? A foul on Billups. And at this point, you would imagine it couldn't get much worse, but it does. Because in the playoffs between the Spurs and the Blazers, Marcus Camby got called for a foul on Steve Nash. And you would think that it's nothing special, but look where the hell Camby is and where Nash is. Nash, a foul away from the ball, Roy, possibly. No, it's on Camby. Nash is shooting, so let's see if Nash is the one that gets fouled. That is a fourth foul in the playoffs? Are you kidding me? You would think this man would learn a lesson, but nah. He would double down and take it even further, till eventually, it would cost him everything. Because in 2007, he would eject Tim Duncan for the most ridiculous thing ever. And another technical foul. And this is what Duncan, Duncan's out of the game. He's thrown Duncan out of the game. That's the second technical, which is an automatic ejection. As we've been showing you, Duncan's been laughing. Maybe Crawford felt he was showing him up by constantly laughing. Worse yet, this 5'3 ball, he waited for Duncan to challenge him to a fight. This dude was a psycho. So it left then-commissioner David Stern with no choice but to ban his ass. And if you ask me, they should have banned him a long time ago. But anyways, number two is even crazier, because we got to talk about the most rigged game in NBA history. Game six of the the 2002 Western Conference Finals, Lakers versus Kings. And by the end of the third quarter, the score was tied 75-75, and the Kings had a real chance to knock the Lakers out the playoffs until the fourth quarter happened. See, over the first five games of the series, the Lakers were averaging 25 free throw attempts per game. And in the fourth quarter of game six, the Lakers attempted 27 free throws. Yeah, they attempted more free throws in one quarter than they've done over the whole series. What's even crazier is that the Kings only had nine attempts from the line, which means the Lakers got 18 more attempts, which if you think about it, is actually crazy. But listen, we still gotta talk about the referee that ruined the NBA so much, he was sentenced to prison. This is Tim Dunahy, one of the most infamous refs in NBA history, and rightfully so, because this man had an addiction, gambling. But in 2003, he took things a step further. And it was that year in 2003 that you actually started betting on NBA games. 
Uh, yes, right around that time, I think. And once he started, he couldn't stop. Because in 2007, he had bet on over 100 games, and most of which he refereed. So finally, it would all come to an end. See, the FBI had gotten an anonymous tip, so they launched an investigation to look for clues. And in August of 2007, the pressure was getting to Dunahee. Because not only was his career flipped on his head, but once the news broke, his wife said F this and packed her bags. Just a few days later, Dunahee pleaded guilty to two federal charges related to fixing games. And in 2008, he was sentenced to 15 months in prison. Yeah, this dude destroyed the reputation of referees and the NBA. But now, more than a decade later, this dude dropped his own Netflix documentary trying to profit off his story. Man has zero shame. And neither do NBA players. Because one player disrespected a whole organization and another thought it would be a good idea to head out with the GOAT. Yeah, the NBA is full of disrespectful moments. And you can see all of them right here.